today's video is all my August sewing ranks. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Hales and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you everything that I've sewn in the month of August this year and you'll notice that my backdrop, my background um, is slightly different and I've changed the angle so hopefully by filming this way around I'm just going to try it out. Um, you will see the full length of my outfit and what I'm wearing so I don't have to keep duffing and diving or filming with my head chopped off like in some of my recent videos. So Bear with me and we'll see how this goes and I may change it up for next month but this is what I'm doing for now. Okay, I'm going to move the chair out of the way that I'm sitting on and we'll launch straight in to makes number one and two. I've got ten to show you, I was quite productive this month and so let's crack on. So I made the t-shirt and the skirt but we'll start off with the t-shirt so I'll just move forward also, oh here we go, I've chopped my head off already, I'll, I'll stop at this point here. Um, it is evening time so the lighting might be a bit funny so hopefully the colours will come fairly true to shade. Now the first one is actually this t-shirt. Now the pattern I use is McCall's 7432. What I will also do is, and um, this was um, the neckline, what was it, I shortened it into a t-shirt. Now to stop me from just holding things up and the lighting changing all the time because it's not daylight outside at the minute. I will put a picture up on screen of all the patterns and as usual everything will be linked down below in the description box so if you didn't catch the number or the the make of the pattern always check that description box out because everything's listed in there. So this pattern here is for dresses but I did make it into a t-shirt. Let me just throw that over there. So this I shortened um, I had made it previously as a sort of mock-up which was sleeveless but I decided to go the sleeveless time but I did have to kind of grade up because I didn't realise when I bought the pattern that it only went up to a medium I think it is. I've now thrown it over there and I can't reach it. It's just annoying because why can't the pattern companies just include all their sizes in one pattern envelope instead of splitting them into two because if you fall in that barrier of between you want to grade between say like bust waist and hips and you're like the smaller size for the top but like this area you're the larger size you're just having to kind of guess it and just like grade out but if they have actual all the pattern pieces for different sizes in one packet then it would make it a lot easier anyway ran over I um I zigzagged um round the bottom and round here I think that my needle was blunt I had a ballpoint needle I think it was blunt because it was churning it up in the sewing machine. It's really messy and um, it's left sort of holes and it's it's not that great. But, oh, by the way, some of these items I would have done a full review in a separate video. So if that's the case, I will link the item and the video all in the description box. Just check the description box and it'll tell you everything that you need to know. I'm just trying not to repeat myself. So yes, yeah, so this was shortened to t-shirt length a bit looser than my last one I'm not sure if it's too loose I did it all on my overlocker apart from the hemming and it has left the shoulder areas a bit tight I think it was maybe the tension needed to be loosened up a bit because it has it did make the seams a bit wavy and then shoulders the shoulders a little bit lumpy anyway that is make number one and while I tuck myself in I will reach the pattern to show you what the skirt is skirt is simplicity 1887 I will try and there we go I think I'm in shot I made the skirt without the there is like an option of just like a front tie to go with it and I, and I did cut the pieces out to do the tie but this is some kind of crepe and it stretched out and slipped out all over the place and it was a bit of a nightmare so when it came to it I just thought you know what, those ties, every time I pull them, they're going to get distorted and it's going to look a complete mess. So I have left the waistband at the front flat um, and it is elasticated. Let me just back up so you can see a bit closer. So it's elasticated at the back here. It has a pleat. I'm not sure if it has one or two. There's a pleat here and a pleat here. And then there's a very busy pattern, so you probably won't see it very well. But it does have pockets and it is 
just above my knee and I cut the longer length of the two and I'm five foot three and quite short waisted so if you are interested in making this pattern just bear in mind as I'm five three and this is the long version of the skirt how short that actually could come if you're a lot taller than myself um, this one also I haven't lined it because it's elastic heated and I don't want to make it too bulky but um, yeah you have to be careful with the kind of underwear with the pattern and with the type of fabric that I've got on I'm not wearing the right underwear so you can see but I've just put this on so I can sh show you everything I've made so that is Simplicity 1887 these makes are in no particular order but this top which is the poly jersey which I was wearing with my previous make I actually bought it at the same time as making this and this was actually the first thing I made in the month and it is a midi skirt. I'm gonna to have to really step back on this one so you can see I'm right in the curtain now. And as you can see, because I've had to stand back so far, it is too long, it's far too long. And the reason for that being, now this is a Lady McElroy, Lady McElroy cotton lawn, possibly. Um, I think it's the end of the bolt, so they were only charging me £7.50 for a metre, and normally that'd probably be double that for a metre. So I got, bought one metre and in one of the sewing magazines online, I don't buy the sewing magazines because they're a bit of a rip off, but on their website they have links to free patterns, which is basically a list of instructions and tells you how to measure. Um, so this skirt here was on there, it was called the Victoria Midi skirt and it was just one big rectangle with two smaller rectangles for the pockets and a waistband and it just told you how to work it out. Now this. Well, it's not sitting too bad now, but originally I had wanted it higher on my natural waist, but it's sitting lower down. So there are two problems with this. First, oh, it's gathered. It's a gathered skirt. I did line it. I think that the lining I added was possibly too bulky. I feel it's quite hippie on me. But the, the two major, I'll just point the flaws out. So, you know, the two major flaws, the first one, is the length it's too long I need to chop some off because I think because it's sitting lower down because I made it the waistband it was wasn't tight enough I thought it was gonna be too tight which I've done before and then when I made it and gathered it all in it was too loose so it's slitting down slightly lower than what I'd originally measured and planned to do so then of course it is like this funny length where I think it just it just swamps me so I've been meaning all month to actually shorten this and I just haven't got around to doing it because I'm not entirely sure whether I like it or whether I will cut the waistband off and repurpose the fabric into something else because the second reason why I don't like well what went wrong is now you're probably not going to see let me just change the angle right I've, I've done it now see it's quite camouflaged with the buttons these are actually plastic buttons they're orange they pick out I thought they were quite a good color match but if you look very closely I don't know if you can see I basically did all the buttonholes horizontally rather than the top one horizontal and the rest vertical and so the buttons are on the very edge because there's like a there's like a sometimes in some places on this fabric there is a natural line of the fabric so of the pattern so I made that into the button placket so the button placket is actually not very wide and as a consequence the buttons are right here and then the buttonhole is like there so you can see all the way down that the buttons are on one side and then there's a big end of the buttonhole because it's the buttons not sitting in the middle had I done them vertically they would have been all laid down nicely so to get them to line up you have they all basically have to sit on one side so I don't know it's just I'm very aware that the buttons are not looking great you might not see on camera but in person and you know when you kind of you make something yourself and you know the flaws and you're just not sure about wearing it I think the idea was good, I think it needs to be shorter, I think it needs to not be gathered at the back, I think it needs to have darts so it sits flatter to be more flattering around the back. So stay tuned um, to see if I do anything with that this coming month. Another disaster is this, it's McCall 6711, it's from their like coordinates range and I have previously made something, I think it was in my July makes actually, which was like peach and green kind of top, which was too tight from here upwards. 
and I'd cut the pattern out into the smallest size because from the bust down it fitted fine but the top half it was too small so I increased it and I kind of guessed because I always didn't have the original in the the pattern in the original state anymore and I added sort of length and width and um, now this is like doing this sorry let me step back so now this is kind of doing this I lowered the V I add oh it, this is like a high low hem for a distance it's probably well, okay I guess but um it doesn't feel that great so I lowered the armholes because they were too high so there was increased length there and when I increased the back like on the yoke um it was like that it was like really low because I think it added too much length to that bit so to pull the back upwards I have sort of like pulled it up from the front and the back and folded it over and top stitched it which is a complete bodge um there but because it's obviously not a plain fabric pattern fabric it is camouflaged a bit but um it's too short as you would have just seen you had a few flashes of belly um there and so i'm not comfortable with that it's it's not great and i actually i'm going to throw that pattern in the bin because i've made three garments from that and i've never worn i any of those three garments so that is going to go and it will make space in my pattern drawer on to a much more comfortable make and we're into the jersey this is cotton jersey i made a few things from this fabric this month and that was in collaboration with bst fabrics again video i'll link down below but that explains why i've got multiple items made out of this cotton jersey this is the astaire tea by french navy patterns it is a kimono kimono t-shirt so you don't have to set in any sleeves it has cuffs that you add on and that you turn you stitch on turn up and then just stitch in place so you've got this sort of bit here which is just like a, the folded up cuff so that's quite nice it has a split hem I think though next time I make it because it does sort of hang down there I think I will join it up and not do the split hem just so it sits a bit closer so I find that a bit more flattering um but it's very you know it's just fairly straightforward this is a very a cotton jersey it's very stable knit it doesn't have, it's not one of those um like a viscose jersey or something where it's really thin and slippery so it hems really nicely it's a good weight for autumn winter time and the print has little leaves on it so that's that's always a good like seasonal bonus and it's quite good length i think i did shorten this by an inch most of my pants i shortened the bodice by an inch this company do a free t-shirt which they're pdf patterns and it's the i think it's stellan tee I didn't I haven't tried that because that was more like a crew neck but I quite liked the idea of this one so I gave it a go and I think it's via Etsy and that's a PDF pattern and one quick hint with PDFs those who don't send them off to print don't want to pay for that and then you do it like me print and stick get a, I saw this hint that if you overlap the pages so you get when you match up like the little triangles to make the diamond get a glue stick and overlap them with a glue stick and do that and you don't have to use sellotape you haven't got to trim them before then sticking them together and then you just cut around them or i guess if you want to trace them then you can trace them but a glue stick and overlapping you can see through the paper and it's so much quicker if you enjoy these kinds of videos then please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and you won't miss a thing and you'll keep in touch with all my other videos which go on throughout the month and my monthly roundups at the end Something else that I made this month and made it quite recently is something I don't physically have to hand because I posted it across to my mother-in-law but I made two piped cushions or cushion covers um, from upholstery fabric. I used, I bought a piping for it and I used that for the first time. I will insert some footage or some photos so you can see those cushions. I made self bias binding and um, sewed that around the cord which is a five millimeter cord and then piped down the cushions and inserted an invisible zip so i made only had enough fabric to make two of them but i made those this month which was in my plans video and i'm glad i got them done she's happy enough with them but i don't physically have them to hand but i have a few makes now which are all going to be from this same fabric so this one's a quick one 
and this is an Alice band and that is for my daughter Penny and that was from the Stitch Sisters tutorial and that was literally just made up from a scrap so I'm casting that as a make. Next up we have some shorts. Now I'm probably not wearing the best top because I'm like blending in so I'm just going to get changed back into that other t-shirt so that you can see what I'm holding up. So I made some shorts. Now I was searching Etsy. I wanted a quick and easy make and they are the, I think they're called the Scuttle Shorts but I will put, again, put the details down below. It was from an Australian maker on Etsy. These were, I don't know, they weren't that much, they were, I can't remember now. But I made a mistake because when I printed the PDF off, I missed off a page which had a tiny bit of um, pattern on. But when I came to put the crotch together, um, oh, I also, I've sewn a little ribbon in the back so my daughter knows front from back but when I put the crotch pieces together um, the front I think the front was longer than the back so they didn't fully work out and it was only after I emailed the lady and she, with some photos and she said you've missed a bit off that's the, the pattern piece so the piece I was missing would have evened it up but because I didn't realise this and then I wanted to get on because she was in Australia, I had to wait for the time difference for a response. I carried on and made these up. So the um, the crotch pieces were a bit wonky and I had to sort of take extra up on the leg to even them out. So they're not great, but the next pair will be because I'll make them and print them on the correct size. This one, I did them flat, um, flat at the front and then I sew them down at the side seams to have the gathers in the back because I prefer that look um, to have it flat at the front rather than having it all gathered all the way around. Right, next up I have two versions of um, this pattern here which is a favourite of mine. Anyone who's been watching my last few monthly makes videos will be sick of looking at this but this is the Rowan Tee by Mrs Sue Patterns. I love it because it is a free pattern, it's a PDF download it is a kimono t-shirt so no sleeves to set in um funnily enough actually when i was looking at this because i've made a long sleeve version as well the the neckband is actually i think i've cut like a age five to six year old and then the size are like a 12 year old or something so it's quite a loose boxy t-shirt um so you do have to be careful if you've got children to sew for just to bear in mind of and you're probably just better off measuring the child and just comparing it so um penny's quite happy with the the neckband here um but as she gets older then obviously we're grading up and lengthening but i will need to cut a bigger width on that this is just folded under at the side and that is that one and i forgot to put a ribbon in that one the other one i made was the long sleeve version she has forest school at school one day a week and she was due to go back to school this week. She was in a panic because she needs to have a long sleeve t-shirt so they don't get scratched by the branches and things when they're out in the forest. And so I made this, which is, which has the arm attached um, on it. So the, where the sleeve goes on, it's a slightly different um, pattern. The way you cut the pattern out of the sleeve is slightly different if you're doing a short sleeve, a sleeveless or whether you're adding the sleeve on. So I reprinted the pattern for the long sleeve. I didn't have enough of this fabric. I had some leftover Ponte Roma, Ponte Roma fabric. This is green from a Colette Mabel skirt, which I made a couple of months ago. Um, and when I did it, she said it was too short on the arms. So I just literally just folded it under and zigzagged around, but it was too short. So I cut that off, made a cuff, and then added it on. So, I mean, I thought she might go, oh, that looks really, really homemade and really rubbish, but she was really pleased with it. This has a pattern for a pocket, but I didn't bother because it was a pattern top. So I thought, and she was quite pleased with that, and because it's like the leaves and things on it as well, and because it's forest school, and actually her teacher, her TA came out and said, oh, Penny said that you made the t-shirt. Oh, it's so good. And they were all like gathered around and had a look at it. So she's not quite at that stage of being fully embarrassed by things I've made for her. So I'm making the most of it. So that was those two. And I have one, one more thing to show you. Last but not least, this is the final make. Again, in the same jer cotton jersey fabric. And it is another Tilling the Buttons betting dress in jersey. 
Now this one I did the same as what I've done before and I put the casing and sewn it upwards rather than down as the pattern suggests. I left off the cuffs like I've done previously as well and I've literally just turned it under and then hemmed it and again I think I did a double turn. I lengthened the skirt part by two inches because I was making this for work. So the skirt part I think I did skim down some of the curve but I know some people just can't stand it and, and some people it really balloons out and looks a bit odd. Some people don't like that curve so you can make it A-line, make it straight. I think I have straightened it out slightly because it also goes in at the bottom and I've just leveled it out a bit more. So the casing's gone up, no cuffs which means if I'm wearing a jacket over it for work or something or if I want to wear a cardigan over it in winter time I haven't got a big bulk sticking out and a big lump sticking out of my cardigan if I'm wearing a fitted cardigan it's a bit more comfortable. And on knows this patterns it's like a kimono top so it's not too tight on there. I think that the neck band may be slightly stretched out when I made it but again pattern fabric you can kind of get away with it and I always think there's a little bit of sort of rippling here and I don't know if that's supposed to do that or not. Um, jersey version doesn't have the, well it suggests to not have the pockets on and the instructions for the jersey dress if you go on her web, Tilly's website it tells you the size you're making um, and what length of strip to cut for the neck brown. So it's really easy, really straightforward to make and it's quite an easy, quick make as well. So that is make number 10 and I do have plans to possibly make another one in September in a diff different fabric because I've used up virtually all my fabric for this one at the moment. But stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in my next video.